Your first step for getting your paper ready to put in the in-text citations and bibliography is to transfer it from Google Docs over into Microsoft Word. Unfortunately for us, Google Docs does not allow us to do in-text citations in a bibliography as nice and neat as the technology does with Microsoft Word. So because of that, we've got to copy and paste from one into the other. So once you are in your Google Doc, you can go ahead and do Edit, Select All, that will select all of your text, and then you can do Edit, Copy, then head back to Microsoft Word and click on Paste. Your document should paste right over into Microsoft Word. Now if you have any kind of issues with formatting, if the um, double spacing didn't carry over or if you need to adjust your font, now is a good time to do that. So your best bet is to do the, up in the upper right there is a select tab. If you click that, you can select all and you can change your spacing from 1.0 to 2.0 using the up and down arrows there, that little button, that's your line spacing. So make sure it's on 2.0. The other thing you need to make sure of is that your font is either size 11 or 12 and it needs to be a legible font. So no curly Q, cutesy stuff because that's tough on my old, old eyes. So good choices. Arial is a standard one. Calibri is another nice standard font. Um, Times New Roman is a pretty basic one. So any of those would be fine. And then in the size, either 11 or size 12, you pick which one you would like. Those are standard paper size fonts. Other things to address at this time are to make sure that your name is in the upper right hand corner of your paper as well as your hour and the date. Up at the top here under the paragraph section you can find the um, align to the right or align to the center or align to the left. If you click on the right it will put it over on the right hand side of your page. Your title should be in the center of your paper. Again if you use that same section if you center it that'll put it right in the center of your paper for you without you having to space it over or tab it over. From there you can go ahead and start your introduction. Make sure of course that your first paragraph is indented using the tab. Google didn't have the tab option so I'm gonna go like this tab and now I am tabbed over. And then you can go ahead and start your introduction paragraph. Now the example that I have, of course, is what goes in the introduction. You should already have these things. You should have three to five sentences total. You'll have your intro sentence to your topic, followed by three sentences about your body paragraphs, and then you finish up with what's called a transition sentence. In that sentence, you will go from talking about your whole paper's topic, so in my example, 60s music, to talking about your first body paragraph's topic. Um, in my case, it's not the Beatles, it's actually Elvis, so I'm going to change that and that should be done in one sentence. Now because I wrote a fake intro here I need to replace it with my actual intro so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Got a little bit of adjusting to do. Tab that in. Make sure I return down for my next paragraph and that's tabbed in. So now I have my intro. I've got my first body paragraph and from there I would write my second body paragraph about Bob Dylan and my final body paragraph about the Beatles and then at the end of my paper I will have my conclusion which again I should have tabbed in and still double spaced following all the same formatting that I already have in my paper. Now one thing we have not addressed yet are the in-text citations and the bibliography. You can see when I typed my paper I left a space, I said citation here, for my my in-text citation, but I don't actually have it formatted the way that it's supposed to be formatted. So I need to fix that now. Anytime you do a research paper, you need to give credit to the source where you got your information. Even if you've written it in your own words, you still need to give credit to the original source. So that's what we're going to take the time to learn how to do today. Now if you have multiple sources for one paragraph, so you've got more than one source that supports that paragraph, you would need to insert the citation after each of your sentences if they vary from source to source. In my case, I only used one source for the entire Elvis paragraph, so I'm going to put my citation right at the end of the paragraph before my transition sentence because everything that comes before the transition sentence in my paragraph are facts that came from one source. 
Now, before I can add my citation, I've got to make sure that everything is ready to be set up for adding the citations. So the first thing I need to do is go on up here to References. If I click on that tab, it's going to bring open all of the different reference tools that I can use. And I'm going to change my style. Right now it's an APA, but in Language Arts we always use the MLA style. And we want to use the most current edition, in this case it's the 7th edition. So select MLA 7th edition. Once you've done that, you are going to do Insert Citation. And I'm going to add a new source because I don't have any in there yet. I'm going to change mine. Mine is actually a website, so I'm going to scroll down until I get website. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in all of the information. First I'm going to click on the Show All Bibliography Fields. And then I'm going to click on any of the information where there's this little red star. Those are the ones that I'm most likely going to be able to include in my citation. So I will take the time to fill that in right now. The author of my website that I was using, you can see it's way down here at the bottom. If you can find the copyright symbol on a website, that's usually where you'll find it. Mine says a and &E Television Networks LLCC, and it was last updated in 2013, so I'm going to include that info over on my Word document. The name of the web page, if I scroll back up to the top, I can see that this one is called biography.com. So I've entered in the name of the website, which is biography.com. The name of the specific web page under that website that I was on was Elvis Presley. I was on his biography. I've already entered the year from down at the bottom of the page, which was 2013. There was no month or day listed, so I'm not going to include that. The year that I accessed it was 2014. The month that I accessed it was January. And you'll see they give you an example here down at the bottom for how you should format it. So I'm going to put mine just like theirs. The date that I accessed it, oh boy, was probably sometime last week. I'm going to go on the 22nd. Now for the URL, you can see that that looks like a web address. So if I go back over to my document or over to my web page, I can right click and copy. And then I can go back over and paste. Um, version, I don't have one of those. I'm going to leave that blank. Boy, all this other stuff, I don't know what any of that stuff is. Uh, medium does not apply to this one, and I don't know what DOI even is. It looks like a bunch of numbers, so that doesn't apply. I'll click on OK. And at that point, you can see that it changed. Oop, oh, I made a mistake. Hold on, back it up. So the website I used was actually a corporate address. It wasn't a corporate name. It wasn't a person. But it, it registered in here like it was a person. So I'm going to click on it, and you can see it brings up some choices. I'm going to edit the source. And I'm going to change this to corporate author. And i got to fix it up a little bit because it didn't quite, it doesn't look quite like the example that they have here down at the bottom. Now it does look the right way, so when I click on OK, it'll ask me that, do I want to update both lists with the changes? Yes, I do. And now it looks right. This thing here with the parentheses around it, that is your in-text citation. That's what an in-text citation looks like. After you're all done typing your paper and you've added in all of your citations, then you'll go down after the conclusion and still under that References tab, you're going to click on Bibliography. And here's where you find the joy of using Microsoft Word for this. All I have to do is click on this big box Bibliography. Bam! It just inserted a properly cited bibliography. All the commas are in the right places, all the periods are in the right places, things are capitalized where they should be. It is brilliant. Now, a few things that we haven't addressed. Number one, if your source sheets are accurate, if you have filled them out accurately, this will make your life a dream today. It should be no problem to enter in the citation information to do all of what you need to do. If you do not have accurate source sheets, you are going to have to go back to the original sources and find that information because you want as much information as possible included in the sources. Second thing is that Google Docs cannot do the in-text citation and the bibliography builder like Microsoft Word can. So if you do not have access to Microsoft Word that looks like the one here at school, you're going to have to do this on a school computer. Um, I would recommend using you know, either a computer in your core teacher's classroom or one in my classroom or the ones in the labs when we're down there. The third thing is that the citations must be done on the same computer only. So if you are working in lab A, computer number 19 on Thursday, and then 
tomorrow on Friday you come back and you're working in lab B on number 19, it does not save the sources across those multiple labs. So make sure that you are staying on the same computer for your citation stuff. And the final thing to know is that if you should need to edit your citations, I'd already showed you how to do that, but if you need to go back and edit, use the little drop down arrow there and click on edit source and that will change it at the original place so you can select if you actually meant instead of a website you needed a book you can do that those are probably the two most common ones that you're going to do and that should be everything that you need to know about doing your in-text citations and your bibliography